Hey everybody, how's it going? So for tonight we're going to do another quick tip uh, in Orca Slicer. We're going to be talking about supports and how easy it is to sort of set some things up. Some of the options that you can go through based on different uh, circumstances where you may or may not need supports. Uh, but before we dive into that, I just want to make a quick announcement on a couple of upcoming videos. So we're definitely going to be covering the 1.6.4 beta coming up really soon. Um, the beta is just out, so it's uh, August 20th if you're watching this in the future. Um, but we'll be going over the, the new features in the beta and whatever fixes and changes that they've made. We'll also be doing a video on filament changes. And we'll also be doing a video on uh, extruder clearances when you're setting up for sequential printing. So those were two, two recommendations, two requests that came in from, uh, from subscribers. So thank you very much for the questions. Happy to do it. Uh, and I will, I will get to those very shortly. Um, and so drop a comment if there's another type of video that you would like me to, uh, to dive into on this, some other topic. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, happy to jump in and do it. So, um, with that being said, like, and subscribe, um, hit the little notification thing. If you want to get notified when those new videos drop, that would really help. And again, leave a comment, interact with the channel in some way. That would be fantastic. Really appreciate it. Okay. So supports, um, they're pretty straightforward to set up. We'll go through a couple of scenarios and then talk about some of the key features here, uh, in the left-hand side in your process tabs. Uh, where you can where you can turn things on and off and what they need. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a couple of objects here so we can run through some scenarios. So first one is sort of the basic simple scenario where we're just going to be running support directly from the build plate up to let's say an overhang that we want to uh, to support. Now this is obviously just a test piece and you really wouldn't print it in this particular orientation, but you'll get the idea. If you do, here's the things that you would have to do. I mean, obviously this is something that prints better on its side, but uh, in this scenario, this is just for, for playing around only, right? So uh, over here on your tabs, obviously you have quality, strength, speed, and then support. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that enable support is checked. That will uh, free open these options for you to now click through. You have a couple of different types that you can choose from. You've got normal uh, auto, you've got tree auto, normal manual, and tree manual. So this allows you some flexibility in, in the auto settings. You're essentially going to identify certain overhang areas and then Orca Slicer is just going to go ahead and implant those supports for you. Uh, under the two manual modes, you are allowed to then go through and paint certain areas of your model so that you can specifically request Orca to place supports in those locations. Uh, and then we have your threshold angle. So this is the angle at which you want um, the auto supports to be generated on. So here you can see it's 30 degrees and less it's going to go ahead and try and add auto supports for you. So obviously these are at, these are at, you know, 90 degrees. So it's basically going to go ahead and add these for you. Anyway, these would be considered, you know, pretty steep overhangs. Um, in this particular scenario, we're going to click build plate only. So we only want it to go up from the build plate, um, support critical regions only. This is more for if you have like, uh, if you're doing figure figurines or something that's got a lot of small features out there, like a little, you know, if you're doing a hand, then it's basically going to identify the finger areas as critical features and add supports for those. And maybe not to some areas like the palm or something like that if the angle is not very steep. So it'll identify those. Raft layers, uh, right now I have these on zero. Now remember, these are raft layers for your supports, right? So you're relative to where you are in your settings. So we're on the support tab. So these are raft layers for your support. You won't, you won't be adding a raft to your part. Um, this is for some extra strength and uh, strength for the supports uh, specifically. Um, this area is where you can identify different filaments if you want to do a raft base and your raft interface layer. So if you had multiple filament profiles labeled up here, so if you had multiple extruders or if you've got a bamboo or something and you've got multiple filaments, you can specify if you want uh, different, different filaments used for the raft bases and raft interfaces. Uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and ignore it. Uh, top Z distance, so that is your Z gap, the gap between the top of the support and your model. We'll get into that in just a second. And then we got a bottom Z distance and a couple of others that we'll get into here shortly. Uh, and then you have some freedom around your, your base pattern and things like that. So before we go too much deeper, let's go ahead and just let's add some supports here. Um, so remember, we are on the build plate only and we've just got normal auto turned on here. So you select your part and up here you just click on the icon for support painting. It's very similar to like the Z-Sync painting. So you have these tool types, you've got a circle, you've got a sphere, uh, you can do a fill, whatever you want. And as you rotate down, you can see it's sort of highlighting some areas in this sort of brownish color as overhang areas for you to apply supports to. So in this case, you can paint. 
Uh, you have auto turned on, so it's automatically going to know when you go to slice this, slice this plate that it needs to support those areas. So if we were to go ahead and slice the plate now, you can see it's automatically generating those support areas. And if we scroll up and down, you can see how it's doing it, right? So you've got, you've got the part here, and as you're rolling down, now you have your, so the dark green are your support interface uh, structures, and then the lighter green is the actual support. And there's a difference here that we'll get into in just a second. You can see here we've got some more dark areas. Those are, again, support interface layers for that particular part. And, and those settings are different than the basic ones because how you set them up um, is basically going to determine how easy it is to pull supports off, this, off, off your parts and, and how much scarring there is and things like that when you do rip them off. So um, let's go ahead and, and roll this back up. So as we sort of roll down here, <clears throat> if we go all the way down to the bottom, we can now see um, the structure. It's basically a concentric pattern as the base. Uh, and then, but when you get into your base pattern, you then have rectilinear, right? So now you can see the rectilinear pattern coming up. You have some different options there that you can, you can choose. Uh, honeycomb, lightning, hollow, things like that. Um, your base pattern spacing, so that is the space between these grid lines in this case, right? So if we were to change this to honeycomb and re-slice this, Right now you have a honeycomb, and if we say, well, I want my honeycomb pattern to be something like six millimeters, and then re-slice this, now the honeycomb pattern is going to get bigger. So that's what those things mean. I'm going to go ahead and switch it back to rectilinear and back down to, let's say, three millimeters. So we're three millimeters of spacing between those lines. Um, pattern angle, so you can change the angle at which those grids or those rectilinear patterns are, are generated. Top interface layers, right? So those are those dark green lines that we talked about. So as we come up here, and so now you'll see these dark green lines. So these are your interface layers. And you can see the spacing on them is different than in the base pattern, right? So top interface layers, I'm saying two, um, two. And if you zoom in here, you can see that there are two layers of this. Um, bottom interface layers is another a totally different thing. And I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, you can specify what that interface pattern is. Again, I'm just sticking with rectilinear. And you want to talk about what your spacing is of these lines, right? So the top interface spacing right now, these are set at a half a millimeter, essentially. So you can you can change this. You can change this to a millimeter, three millimeter, what, you know, whatever you want. Again, however tight this is, the more surface area you have touching the part, the harder it is going to be potentially to remove the support. So you need to be a little bit on the conservative side here, I would say, depending on how critical that area is for you to support. Um, bottom interface spacing, again, we'll get into that. Um, normal support expansion. So if you want to blow this, blow the normal support bigger than it normally would be calculated to print, you can specify that millimeter. So if you wanted to print a millimeter wider than it would normally calculate, that's where you'd specify that. So the support object XY distance is the distance from the support structures itself and your part. So I had this set previously on like 0.35. You see that it's going to be super close to the part. It normally would be. As long as you've got some gap there, you're usually pretty good. Um, you know, you need to be able to throw in whatever comfortable you are with that bridging across that particular part. So, you know, again, if you do something like three millimeters, uh, if you're even running like a basic Ender 3 or something like that, you're not going to have much problem, right? It's going to it's gonna bridge a gap of three millimeters, no problem, right? So, um, so then as you're coming up, there you go. You got the gaps there, things like that, uh, and you're all set. So that's probably the easiest thing to do. You can say don't support bridges. So if you're doing something like a temperature tower, or you've got a couple of columns and you have bridging, and then a column and then bridging, and you're testing different temperature ranges as you go up, that is specifically set there so that you're not supporting those bridges because the whole the intent of the temperature tower is to test which area you know what temperature that particular filament performs at the best, including bridging across gaps. So you don't want to support bridges in that case. That's what that's fair. That's what that's there for. So you can say don't support bridges. Um, now, if you're 3D printing a bridge and it wants to be finished and that bridged area is pretty critical to the finish, then you might want to go ahead and support it. So in that case, you would go ahead and turn it off. Uh, independent support layer height. All this means is that the support layers, the layers of your actual support material may be different than what you've set up for your actual print resolution layer heights. That's all it means and it's okay. All right, so if this is set at like a 0.2 layer height, but it's gonna print these at a 0.3 or something like that, who cares, right? You're ripping support off and you're throwing it away. It's there to, so that you can 
print the part in a particular orientation without it failing, right? So, so there you go. So that's the very basic one from manual, uh, the normal auto. Now, if we go ahead and swap this over and we say normal manual, now you get a little bit more control over um, where supports go. So if we go back over here to the support painting and let's, now we'll use our tools and we'll say, okay, well, in this case, I want to do support here and support here and support here and support here. And we'll just leave it like that. Slice the plate. So now you can see it's not just completely blocky. It is actually trying to add support specifically where you told it to um, on the model in this particular slice. Easy peasy. Uh, you also have the options of doing tree. So you have tree structures here. And once you change the tree type, uh, you'll now get tree support settings that come up down here. So that you have some extra little tweaking that you can do to, to those. So if we slice the plate, right, again, uh, well, this probably isn't the best part to demonstrate tree on. Why don't we swap it to um, tree style and tree strong? So you have a couple of different options there. Tree strong. Tree slice. So now you get a more of a classic tree structure where you've got a trunk, you've got branches, uh, and you have things coming off the branches. Um, and so, again, this is probably not the best model to demonstrate uh, tree printing on uh, best for something like a figurine if you got something that where you got arms and wings and stuff hanging out or you have you know chin overhangs things like that tree supports are fantastic for those uh, if you're doing helmets things like that tree supports are great uh, but you have the flexibility to, to play around with that a little bit and then you have once you pick tree you have some additional styles in here that you can play with so let's bail out of this now we're going to go to the second type uh, that I want to demonstrate, and that is a totally different part here, but it is where you have supports um, within the part, not just coming from the build plate. So if I go ahead and rotate this up again, um, you know, if I chose to be to be dumb and, and print this in this particular orientation, again, this is for demonstration purposes only, but basically I'm not going to be really printing much right here um, from the build plate, but between these two features of the part. So this is the bottom surface of that of that object and obviously this is going to be the top surface or the the bottom of the top surface um sorry this is the top surface and that's the bottom surface so if we go ahead and put this back over to normal and auto and slice the plate you can see what it's doing it did absolutely nothing because i didn't specify that area to be painted uh, so why don't we go ahead and roll this back so now we have that part in this orientation and so if we go ahead and we have make sure, so we previously we had uh, on build plate only. Well, that's not necessarily the case because we're going to be supporting between these two features of this part. We can go ahead and tick that off. And if we painted this particular area, it doesn't really matter where because you have normal auto turned on and you slice the plate. Now you can see what it's going to do. It's going to generate support to that whole thing, right? So you still have your top interface settings here, right? So you've got a gap here top Z distance of 0.2 millimeters of a gap. So there is going to be a 0.2 millimeter gap between the last thing here. And you can see it built the wall on this side when I clicked up. And then you're gonna have that, your first bottom layer of that top feature. But there will be, theoretically, right, a 0.2 gap, right? An air gap. Now, it's not gonna really be there because the parts are gonna get stuck together a little bit, but they're not gonna get welded together and then you're gonna have to be, you know, cutting stuff apart type of thing. So that's what the Z gap does is allow you some of that distance. Now, the bottom Z distance, that's this down here, right? So bottom Z distance, also a 0.2 millimeter gap. So it's trying to basically print part of your support in midair to help it from sticking to the next feature. So there would be, and I have top layers turned off, so this is gonna be a little bit wonky, but um, there would be a 0.2 millimeter gap between this surface and the start of your, um, of your, of the base of your support structures. So that's what that is for, is to help you be able to pull that thing off a little bit easier as you go. Um, so now one of the kind of, uh, nice kind of tricky things you can do if we go ahead and use some of the, the tree features. So if we do tree manual and we change it to something like tree, I don't know, strong. And we go ahead and let's go back to prepare and let's make sure, let's erase all the painting. So we're on tree manual. So I want to basically support this portion here, slice plate. 
Now this will take a little extra time to, to, to slice for you, but this is what it starts to look like. <clears throat> now again, I've got my top layers turned off. I'm, why don't I just go fix this because it's kind of dumb. Um, why don't I go ahead and strength, uh, strength, all loops, top surface shells. Let's just put this up to five. There we go. Reslice the plate. Make this look a little bit better. So there you go. So now you have, <clears throat> you have some tree supports coming from the base, right? And, and then they merge up and they're supporting the bottom portion of this area here. And you've only got one part of the trunk that's touching this uh, top surface. So if this top surface is really important, so you can play with some of these settings back and forth and find the one that you like. So if you went to something like Tree Slim, this is actually something that is um, uh, experimental. So you can read through some of the recommendations it's going to say. I'm saying, no, I'm, I'm going to ignore them for now. I'm just going to go ahead and slice the plate. But it's a slimmer version of what we just looked at. Or is it? Slice plate. Sorry, let's go again. There we go. So you can see it's trying to do the basically the same thing, but it's not touching the surface here. But it is touching the portions of this bottom surface that I had already uh, painted. So again, very cool. You have some options you can go through and play around with. Um, <clears throat> you know, overall... Overall, it's kind of slick. I like that it's easy. I do miss some of the, like the very precise manual control that you have in like Idea Maker and some of the other slices, slicers where you can specify, I want this type of column, and you can actually click and drag, and it dynamically sort of changes as it touches features uh, in the preview. Um, so I do kind of like that. This isn't bad. It's not like the best support features I've ever seen, but it's pretty good. It's pretty easy at least. Um, let's see if there's anything else we need to talk about here, but there, once you change to tree supports or tree types and styles and your advanced features start to open up a bit more. So you can change the support branch distance, the diameters, the angles, um, you can select a, adaptive layer heights or not. Uh, and then you have some of the basic ones like the top Z distance and bottom Z distance that we already talked about, but you get a couple of extra, uh, advanced features when you have tree supports turned on. So those are items to definitely take a look at. So, so there you go. I mean, again, it's, it's pretty easy. If you want to get rid of what you've done and you go back in here to your paint, you can just simply say, we'll erase all painting, right? You can specify the pen size when you're using these tools, how it overhangs, things like that. Um, again, there's not a ton of features here. They make it pretty simple. Uh, there you go. That's the supports. Um, it, they make it pretty simple. So if you are in a situation where you need to turn on supports, those are the basics. Again, you go over to the support tab, make sure that enable support is checked. And that's pretty simple because none of these options will be highlighted for you to actually change until you tick that box. So, um, yeah, there you go. Pretty simple. So again, like, and subscribe, drop a comment. I uh, really appreciate your time. Thanks everybody. See ya.